I'm Juliana Nelson, System Director in Alumni Engagement, and I'm here in the Bone Student Center Catering Kitchen with the Executive Chef, Philip Cade. He's going to give us a tour of this lovely facility. Hi, and thank you for joining us today on the tour of the Catering Kitchen. Um, it was renovated about a year ago. We've been in it about a year, but unfortunately, we haven't done any catering operations out of here, so we've been running our um, COVID meals out of here. Uh, we'll just start over here with our uh, new uh, coffee ovens. Uh, they're ovens that uh, we cook with steam and with uh, direct heat. It's a kind of a combination of a convection oven along with a steamer. Um, some of the technology allows us to uh, program pictures in there. That takes the guessing out of what we're cooking. So in this case, we have the, the cookies on there. So you put your trays of cookies in there, you press a button, and it cooks the cookies exactly how the recipe is written. And we have hundreds of other recipes programmed in there uh, exactly like that as well. So I'm standing here next to a couple of steam kettles. Uh, we have a 60 gallon steam kettle and a 40 gallon steam kettle. You might have seen uh, some bigger ones over at the CSC over at Watterson earlier today that are 100, 100 gallon kettles. Um, these we use for large banquets. Uh, we use them for cooking, we cook a lot of vegetables in them. We make a lot of soups and sauces in the steam kettles. Um, what's nice about them is they have a, a jacket in there so there's actually water in between the metal, which uh, creates steam, and it um, basically just stops you from burning your sauces. It makes it pretty hard to burn something while you're, while you're doing it. It spreads the heat out evenly. Um, and like I said, it's also a good way to cook broccoli for 500 people all at one time. Another piece of equipment that we have here is a tilt skillet. Uh, tilt skillets are nice. Uh, you can do a lot of things in these. You can sear your steaks, you can sear your chicken, uh, you can again make soups in it. Uh, we make a lot of risotto in, in these kettles, but they are you can do cook bacon in them and then cook, cook your eggs in them. So these are multifunctional. It's actually one of the most used pieces of equipment that we use in the uh, in the kitchen. One of the nice things about it is we have the floor drains here. So when we go to clean it, we just have to crank the handle. And then we grab the hose, that's right here, and we just kind of rinse it out, put a strainer under there, so we are um, not clogging the drains up. But again, this the, the tilt skill is probably our most used piece of equipment in the kitchen outside of our ovens. Here we are at our charboiler and our griddle that we use for uh, grilling vegetables, grilling steaks, grilling all kinds of different proteins. Same thing on here, we can cook eggs, bacon, uh, we sear our fish, it's really efficient for searing fish off. Uh, when we have parties for four or 500 people where we need 500 pieces of salmon. Under here, we have uh, refrigerated drawers that don't have anything in at the moment, but we keep, all, we keep a lot of our proteins in there when they're marinating uh, before we actually put them on the grill. Uh, this is our eight burner stove. Um, probably about five times as uh, powerful, about five times as many BTUs as that you would have in your home stove. Uh, we use this a lot for smaller events, making smaller uh, sauces, stocks, and uh, things like that, searing off fish so we don't have to clean in a pan, so we don't have to clean the entire griddle. Um, and then we have um, some high capacity fryers here. Uh, during the actual COVID, we use these a lot to serve the circus room when we had we ran a to-go dining center in here. Um, this thing is amazing. It lowers down and raises up whenever the food's done, and you, it recovers really quickly. So we've used this a ton the last three or four months. Uh, this is our coffee machine that we use here in Catering. Uh, it is capable of brewing 80 gallons of coffee every hour. So when we have our big functions, if you ever wonder how we do all the coffee, this is it. So during normal catering operations, we like to keep a large variety of spices so we can create menus to our guests' needs and just so you can have a little bit of fun in the kitchen as we're, as we're cooking. So we have about 35 different spices here that allow us to make food from all over the world. Um, 
So it's, it just really allows us to be creative and, like I said, please the customer, give them what they give them what they want, and they ask for. It. So one of the things that I get asked the most about is how do you plan a meal for 2,000 people uh, during our busy times in catering? We might have four four or five meals going out for over a couple hundred guests each day. We might have a breakfast for 300 people. We might have a couple lunches for a couple hundred people. Then we roll into dinner service where we might have a meal at the president's house for a speaker that's speaking on campus. And we also might be doing a wedding the same night in the ballroom for five or 600 people. Um, the, uh, what I always tell them is you, you have to start out by having the right equipment. We've already seen some of the ovens, uh, the tilt skillets and, and fixed equipment like that. But you also have to have all the pans to put all the food in. Um, we have thousands of these pans across campus. Uh, a couple thousand sheet pans across campus. We have uh, these bakery cabinets. These are probably one of the most used things on campus. Um, I think we have right around 100 of the bakery cabinets. We put everything in there. Uh, salads, whenever we're uh, serving a banquet, that's what we put our salads into. We put our desserts in there. We, uh, as we're moving equipment around campus, every, everything goes in into these bakery cabinets and just gets moved around campus. So, um, just even just any type of large event requires a lot of different equipment. Um, storage pans are a huge thing that if you don't work in the business, you don't really think of all the different different types of equipment that you, that you will really use for for storing stuff. Uh, so one of my favorite things about working for EMDH or ISU is the uh, student involvement. EMDH uh, is the largest employer of students on campus. We have about a thousand students that, that we do employ. And here in catering especially, I think more than any other area in e EMDH, um, students learn life skills. Uh, they come in, they learn how to cut vegetables up, they learn how to sear things, they learn how to fry. And then most importantly, they learn how to work clean, uh, in a clean way, in a clean manner. Um, they learn how to write and they learn how to follow recipes. Um, so it's, it's things like that, that they, once they leave ISU, whether they're a business major, a nursing major, or whatever it is, education major, uh, these are skills that when you reach out to students or they reach out to you years later, they always bring up and say, man, I still make fruit trays. I still make vegetable trays. And, I can't believe how much I use the skills that I use that I learned while working in catering. So I'm just standing by here, some of our, our dry goods storage. Um, another thing that uh, normally when you do a large event, we know about these events months in advance. Uh, the way it all starts is obviously the customer contacts our sales office. And once they've worked through the details with the customers, they create a spec sheet, which is, which is essentially a contract that we work that we work from. So, in an event of like a thousand people, we might have um, we might start ordering the product a month in advance. If you need to order a thousand steaks that are all the same size, um, a lot of times the processors need to know about that in advance because it's something that they're that is not in their normal inventory. Um, so, you actually start working backwards from that as far as. Um, your ordering goes. So everybody's favorite part of big events is the cleaning up at the end of the day. Um, here we have a, uh, I think it's a 14 foot three tank dish machine, which uh, we wash all our plates, glasses, uh, bowls, and all, all the, basically everything that goes on the tabletop uh, gets ran through this dish machine to be cleaned. Um, and what's really nice since we've set this up is the first, all the water is recycled through the entire system. So we start with the final tank here. That's your rinse tank. That water goes back into the second tank. And then that water will go back into your third tank, which will be your first tank, which is your um, rinse tank. So all the water is recycled, but your final rinse is your brand new water coming into the machine. And then it comes out at least 180 degrees in water as the dishes come out to sand to do the final sanitation on the dishes. Then all of that water, once instead of dumping it down into the drain, it comes over here to the uh, extractor or pul or pulper system.
again, one of the nice things about this machine, it takes, basically what it does is it takes the uh, moisture out of the food. So you put eight pounds of food waste in here, it extracts the water content out of it, and you come out with one pound of food, one, one pound of waste that then is composted, that then is sent to uh, Midwest Fiber, I believe, and they use it to make compost for um, a variety, a variety of uses. Uh, but like I said earlier, all the machine, all the water from the dish machine is piped over here, so we're actually using uh, used water to, to run this, so we're not using more water, so it's very environmentally friendly. So we were talking in the kitchen about equipment. That was just for cooking. Um, all of this equipment is for actually serving the meal. It all goes on the tabletops. Um, as you can tell, there's a lot of glasses, a lot of pitchers. Uh, there's a lot of equipment that is needed to serve several thousand meals per day. So this is our system that we use to, uh, that allows another company to come and reuse our fryer oil. Uh, we have a machine here that goes under our uh, fryers in all the kitchens. Uh, we drain the oil into here, roll this machine over here, hook it up, and this pumps out all the oil into this container here. And about every week to two weeks, depending on how full it is, we have a company that comes, drains this out, and then takes takes the oil and reuses it to. I, I believe the last the last thing I heard was they use it to heat greenhouses, uh, to grow to grow different foods in, and. This is something that we didn't have before, and we just had a big grease trap and got thrown away. So th this is our new loading dock. Um, this is a brand new addition to the building. This, uh, the old loading dock was really challenging for the truck drivers to come in and reverse their semis into. Uh, this just allows them to back right up off of University Street and drive right back to the loading dock. Uh, what's great about this is we have a loading dock here that's built just for semi trucks. The other one over there uh, also works for semi trucks, semi trailers, but it also lowers all the way down to the ground for deliveries that are in vans and things that just need to be uh, that don't do not do not go into a semi trailer. So it's been really nice this last year having something that we're not carrying stuff down the loading dock or loading the semis at different angles. So thank you all very much for going on the tour of the uh, new Bowen Student Center Catering Kitchen and some of the other amenities that were built. Uh, we know that none of this would have been possible without your donations and support. So thank you all very much.